Hey there, this is Stacy the Baby Maker Roberts, and I'm coming to you today with a fertility tip, the Baby Maker's Fertility Tips. So wanted to discuss with you something that um, I, I talked to my patient about last week, and it honestly drives me crazy when I hear about this and see this in the clinic. So I've written about it before in Fertility Tips, but I want to do some updates about it, and I'm going to be talking about AMH, or anti-malarian hormone. Um, AMH is a test that probably was really looked at in humans about 15 years ago. It started to be looked at in humans there from a clinical perspective. But the, when I looked at it about probably 13 years ago, because a patient of mine from Dubai came in and said, or contacted me and said, hey, um, my AMH is low, can you help me? I've, I'm pretty much out of eggs because my AMH, the doctor told me that because my AMH is low. And I went, hmm, I have never heard of AMH before. This was again back in the early 2000s. And I did a lot of research on the AMH and it, uh, I said to her, well, let's get started as I do this research on the AMH, let's just get started on my five-step fertility solution. And that certainly can't hurt. And then I'll see if any of that applies to your AMH levels. Um, and whether or not you know AMH truly is an issue with you running out of eggs, or the egg timer test, or the egg count test, which is what it has been referred to, which in a minute you'll find out is totally not true. So here we go. Um, so I started seeing her. We started working on the five-step fertility solution. And as I looked into more about what AMH was at that time, there wasn't a lot of studies on humans that had been published. It was mostly studies on animals. What they found was the animals that responded well to insemination, so when they get, got the drugs to be stimulated for an insemination, they tended to have normal, or if they responded too much hyperstimulated, they tended to have high AMH. If they responded just right, you know, Goldilocks, uh, they uh, had normal AMH. And then if they didn't respond well, they had low AMH. So they came up with this average of 14 to 30 in Australia, um, or between two and, um, let's see, two and two and a half for the US measurements as being the normal range. Well, women then started coming to me later and saying, I'm, I'm out of normal, uh, the normal range, my AMH is low, 10 years ago, and that was incorrect. And I thought that was corrected by doctors understanding that there's a normal age range for AMH for all women, whether they're having fertility issues or not. So there is no one normal range for women in regards to their AMH, unless it's age related. Okay, so as you can see by this graph here, and you can see the AMH gradually declines as we age based on these two charts. Now the A1 chart are women who have been diagnosed as infertile and the A2 chart have been women who have had children. So as you can see, there's minimal to no difference between those two. Women's AMH, whether they're pregnant or not, is going to decrease. And it's usually we will look at this after about 25 years old. And women who are younger tend to have AMH levels that fluctuate through their cycle. They fluctuate, they can be high in the first part of the cycle and very low in the luteal phase. So did your doctor tell you to go and check your AMH on a certain day? I don't think so. Most doctors aren't doing that. Um, some doctors are testing on day two, day three. Um, some doctors are not. But anyway, I, di I digress. So um, working with this woman, I found that there was not many um, studies in regards to AMH in humans, but over time, those studies have improved and started coming out. Now, the great thing about this female that we worked with, she worked with me for six months, went back to IVF, created an embryo, and ne had never had created an embryo before and became pregnant. And the doctor told her, must have been your last egg. And I was about ready to choke him because that is such a horrible thing to say to anybody, um, especially when she was, she was having a cycle every month. It wasn't as though she wasn't cycling at all. So fast forward through the years, we start to see more and more information about AMH coming out that you know it's, it's the egg timer test and that indeed it does decrease as women age. But what they don't tell women who have fertility issues is, is a 40 year old with a low AMH, that's normal for her age because AMH in a 40 year old tends to be low has the same AMH level that a woman who has been able to be pregnant and has been fertile. So it doesn't, having a lower AMH and having a normal AMH for your age does not mean that you can't become pregnant. But what it does mean is that with IVF, it's harder to stimulate and get the number of eggs that they shoot for for IVF. That's what AMH will tell you. 
it's not that you're running out of eggs, it's just your response to medication may be less than what it should be if you're over a certain age or if your AMH levels are low. And the funny thing is, knowing that, that women don't react well to low AMH, don't react well to the IVF medication with low AMH, women are being like pushed into IVF telling you, hey, you're, you're running out of eggs and you need to do IVF as soon as possible or you're not gonna, it's not gonna work. That to me is absolutely ludicrous. When you know that you're not gonna respond well with a lower AMH, instead of being an alarmist and saying, oh my God, you're, you're running out of time, menopause is gonna happen next week, step back and say, all right, what can I do to improve my overall health? So if I have to go to IVF, I wanna improve my chances of it working. Well, it usually takes about six to eight cycles for that, so that six to eight months for that fo new follicles to come up onto the ovaries that would be available for IVF. So why not take six months and improve your chances? Because in that period of time, or improve the health of those eggs, because in that period of time, those eggs aren't gonna get healthier if you're following the five-step fertility solution. And they're gonna be, there's a better chance that the eggs that you do create with IVF are gonna be healthier, or the eggs that you do create for a natural pregnancy. Just because a, a, a cell is getting older, or even if it's true that the eggs are just sitting there and running out, but if you followed my um, information, my blog, you know that that's even been disproven and, and is controversial these days, that we may be creating eggs each month. But let's say the old, old theory is true, that we have these eggs sitting around. And you've got two 35-year-olds. So if you look at one 35 year old who smokes, drinks, doesn't exercise, um, whether they're overweight or not, and does, it has a poor lifestyle. And then you look at another 35 year old who um, you know, drinks in moderation, um, doesn't smoke, uh, exercises, takes care of herself, et cetera. Do you think that the cells in her body in general are going to be healthier in the woman who has lifestyle factors that support health or the woman who has lifestyle factors that don't support health. Yeah, I know you know it's the woman whose lifestyle factors support health. So her cells are going to reflect that as well. So if you, the reason why women have been able to improve the quality of their eggs while on our program is because they're improving their lifestyle factors, they're optimizing hormone levels, and in some cases they're increasing their AMH, okay? And getting a better response with IVF. Or a, uh, or a pregnant pregnancy naturally, or with an insemination that it didn't work before. So AMH doesn't tell us much. And the other thing is AMH that's irritating to me about AMH is, you know, I had one woman come in who said she had low AMH. She, you know, wanted to test to see what her egg, you know, how many eggs she had left. So she had her AMH levels done, and she did so while she was on the pill, and it was extremely low. And the doctor said, well, it doesn't matter that you're on the pill. We'll still do it while you're on the pill. Well, she quickly got off the pill and wanted to do IVF right away because her AMH levels were so low. The doctor didn't tell her that the pill lowers AMH. Look at this graph here. This is a study that shows that women only for five to nine weeks have been um, on the pill. And look at what their baseline was before they got on the pill and then, or, and then the patch. Um, and now look at what they're, where they're at um, being on the pill. So the pill lowers AMH. So if you have friends who are considering egg freezing because their AMH levels were low and they were on the pill, they may be wasting tens of thousands of dollars okay, on doing an uh, egg freezing cycle when they maybe didn't have to at all. Because off the pill, if they went off the pill and looked at what their levels were for three to six months later, then their AMH may have been normal. So if they're doing it solely on the purpose of, oh my God, I'm running out of eggs, and that was based on when they were on the pill, it's totally inaccurate, okay? The other thing too is AMH has been shown to be inaccurate <laughs> in general. So some assays in pathology labs that test AMH when they're compared to other assays for AMH, they get totally different results. So is that because they're doing it on a different day of the cycle? Or, or if they're using the same blood sample and they're getting two different results, there's gotta be an issue with the test. So unfortunately, AMH overall, depending on what pathology test you're doing, can tend to be inaccurate. So really AMH correlates with the number of follicles that come up on the ovary each month. Okay, it doesn't necessarily correlate with egg reserve, but it correlates with the number of follicles that come up onto the ovaries each month. And as we age, we have less and less follicles that come up onto these ovaries, but that doesn't mean those eggs aren't healthy enough to create a pregnancy, 
Okay, so AMH is oftentimes misunderstood. It varies throughout the cycle. It can be inaccurate in its testing. Um, it varies depending on if you're on the pill or not, or IVF medications or not, or if you've just had an IVF cycle or not. It can vary depending on whether you have polycystic ovaries or insulin resistance, whether you're overweight or underweight, whether you smoke or you don't. So AMH doesn't have a very good track record to give us any information about fertility. So whatever you do, don't allow anybody to tell you that just because one number, in this case AMH, one number looks like it's too low or, or not the number that it should be, do not let them say that you're at the end of your rope. Now, that being said, if you haven't had a period in six to 12 months, um, you're over 44, um, you've um, um, had other issues related to your menstrual cycles and things like that that would need to be looked at or you're on HRT for some reason or your thyroid is out of whack. Those can be legitimate reasons of why you potentially will not be able to become pregnant or those, if they can be fixed like thyroid issues, need to be addressed before you're able to become pregnant. But if you are within the age range of 20 to 44, you still have a great chance of becoming pregnant naturally or with IVF if your partner's sperm is healthy as well too. So by following the five-step fertility solution for both of you guys, you're improving the health of the cells in your body, including the, the egg cells and the sperm cells. And even if, let's say, there wasn't an issue with the sperm, even though semen analysis, and my next tip will be about semen analysis not being accurate for whether or not there's an issue for men or not, but let's say there wasn't any issue. Do you, is it a bad thing for the sperm to be even healthier? You know, No, it's not a bad thing for him to follow the same steps that you are or for her to follow the same steps that you are if you're a gentleman watching to just improve the chances of it working for natural pregnancy or IVF in general. So I hope you can see uh, I'm relatively passionate about this because there's so much misinformation about there about AMH and women are feeling guilty that they've waited too long and the test may not even be accurate. Women are beating themselves up because they you know, didn't freeze their eggs when if they were unhealthy when they froze their eggs, do you think their eggs are going to be healthy when they're frozen? No, not necessarily. Women are feeling guilty about the fact that they couldn't find a partner for a long period of time and let's say that they're 40 and they finally found somebody that they loved and they they found out that their AMH was low and, and IVF didn't work for them and they think it's all over. Those things are not necessarily the case. And what drives me crazy is when women are just pushed into IVF without doing anything to prepare themselves health-wise, whether that's three months or six months or even a year. Most women are going to be doing three months or six months to prepare for an IVF cycle if that's where they're going. And lo and behold, what if they become pregnant naturally in the meantime? IVF doctors may not be happy about that, but certainly the couple is going to be happier and more, finan more have more finances in the bank. So I hope that you um, understand that I'm not against IVF. I'm not against um, any uh, artificial reproductive technique. I just want women and men to be informed. I don't want them to be told information that's inaccurate, that makes them feel guilty, and they have to carry that shame or that anger or that hurt for long periods of time for the rest of their life. And I want people to be empowered about what they can do and be able to say, look, I did everything I possibly could to improve my situation. And even it, whether it worked or not, the worst thing that can happen is that you become healthier in the process. If you have any questions about AMH or you want that AMH table to see where you lie in, um, in regards to how much time you have to menopause, because that's what really AMH lets us know. And in a woman who has low AMH level at 40 years old, usually has a minimum of five years left before she goes into menopause, not a couple weeks. And that's shown in this chart, which was researched on, on women um, across the board. So if you want that, please email info at naturalfertility.com and ask for a copy of that to be sent to you so you can see where you're at. Let me know what country you're in so I can tell you um, how to convert the units of measure in case you're not in the United States. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about AMH, please also shoot me an e email to info at naturalfertility.com. And um, also just an update on the thermometer. If you've been watching my tips, I've been looking for a really good thermometer. I think I found one, so I'm excited. I've had actually had a manufacturer make a uh, uh, almost an exact replica but with some improvements of thermometer that I found that was working really well. So I will have a, an extremely fantastic deal for those of you who are listening to my um, baby maker fertility tips. 
uh, for you to order, like 70% off of the retail price for this thermometer, if you're in the United States. Um, right now, that's the only place that I can sell them in. Uh, and so stay tuned to other fertility tips um, and uh, you can get that the best um, bargain that you can or the best price that you can. And if you, you continue listening to Baby Maker Fertility Tips and continue reading my, my information that I send out, I'm going to always try to find the best deals for you, the best information for you to empower yourself and improve your situation. And I hope it's not too long till you create that little life you long for. Thanks for your attention. I'm off my soapbox now about AMH. Have a wonderful week.